Hi, I'm Santina Durango, Health Educator for the Fairfield Health Department. And I'm Amy Lahaney, one of the sanitarians with the Fairfield Health Department. And we're here today to talk to you about data. Yay! Yay! We love data. <laughs> uh, we are the two health department staff who manage uh, our COVID-19 data page. If you haven't checked it out, it's fairfieldct.org slash COVID-19 data. Uh, so we manage the page and we analyze our Fairfield data. Uh, we are not epidemiologists by any means, but we do have advanced degrees in public health. Amy has a master's degree and I have a doctorate degree in public health. So we like data. We call ourselves the data <laughs> geeks of the department because it gets us super excited. Um, we really like to look at it. So just to give you some background, we started um, looking at the data really early on. The town wanted to be as transparent as possible regarding the spread of COVID-19 here in Fairfield. Um, and we were probably one of the first local health departments to really start pushing out some local data. Um, and so we've received many questions uh, regarding our data page. There is a ton of data uh, and a lot of information. So we received phone calls and emails and we've seen posts on social media. Um, so we wanted to do a little video and we'll try to be as quick as possible uh, just to kind of give you a snapshot of the data page and what to look for and see if we can explain it a little bit better. So let's get started. All right, great. Right at the top of our page, we have a chart, which is our daily update chart. This is just a quick chart for numbers of where we are for that day. Okay, and right underneath there, you'll see a graph. This is the Fairfield uh, total cases by date reported. So this is the by day that the state of Connecticut gives us uh, our cases for the day. Um, I do wanna just point out two quick things. One, you'll see in some cases we have negative cases. Uh, that's because through address verification that the state does, through some of our address verification, some of those cases actually don't belong to Fairfield. They're not Fairfield residents, so they get taken away. And then you'll see some big jumps. So I did want to point out uh, on 724, you'll see a huge increase of 26 cases. That does not mean that on that day there were 26 new cases. This was a data dump. So a lab was delayed in reporting the cases to the state of Connecticut and thus delayed to us. And they were all uh, inputted on the same day. Now, because of these uh, discrepancies that happen, um, we did start looking at uh, the, the date when people um, were tested, so the specimen collection date, and this actually gives a better snapshot of what's going on in the community. So this is when people were tested for COVID-19, theoretically when they were most contagious. So this is probably the better graph to look at. So the next graph is uh, a graph that we just put out maybe a month or so ago. It is our age graph. Uh, there's an average and the median age. We have both on there because the average can be skewed by highs and lows. So we wanted to give you both to give a representation of what the average age in the community is right now of our COVID-19 cases. And then a little bit below that, we did uh, break the cases out and the deaths out by um, nursing homes or assisted living, which we call, uh, we group them all together as the elder facilities versus the general population. And we did that because Fairfield uh, has seven nursing homes uh, or assisted living facilities. Um, and so our case number uh, increased quite a bit because um, there were some outbreaks in these uh, facilities. So we wanted to break it out um, by cases, by death and um, by specimen collection date. So you'll see that on those three charts. Our next graph is something that's also a little newer, probably out in May, and this is our positive and negative. This just gives you an idea is that as testing uh, became more available to the general public, um, the number of positives did not necessarily increase along with that. So we just wanted to give an indication and, and kind of watch the trends of where we are with positivity uh, versus the number of tests being collected. Okay. The next few graphs are probably some of my favorites. Um, we have the outcomes for Fairfield residents, and you'll see there are three categories. Uh, there's the assumed recovery, so these are individuals who have been in our surveillance system for 30 days or 60 days if they are in a nursing home uh, with no reported death, so therefore we assume that they've recovered from the virus. Uh, we have recovery, which is these are the individuals who through monitoring have confirmed that they fully recovered from the virus. And then we have our death. Um, so these are strictly the outcomes. The cases that are still lingering, those are people who are either still actively ill or um, they haven't met that 30 day or 60 day um, period yet 
period yet to assume that they've recovered. And then right below that are the reported symptoms for uh, Fairfield residents. Uh, this is one that we were kind of really excited about um, to start seeing what symptoms uh, our residents were experiencing, um, just to get an idea of uh, how they were feeling and some symptoms that you may not um, that aren't the standard fever, cough, shortness of breath, like GI issues, and then we capture asymptomatic. So our next graph is one that we started way back in March, and it was a way to kind of compare where we were with the town versus the county and the state, and that was by breaking it down per 50,000 people. Uh, that made it easier to do some comparison with some numbers and see some trends versus the county, the town, and the state. Below that, it started a little bit later, it was all the surrounding towns and their cases per 100,000 of population. And again, it's a way to compare all of the towns together on one graph. And our final two graphs are about hospitalizations. Um, the first one is a like, beautiful bell curve that we mm -hmm. love. Um, and that just shows you when our hospitalizations peaked and where they are now. And then the last one we have is um, hospitaliz hospitalization changes per day. So whether we have an increase in hospitalizations or a decrease as people get discharged. And we can watch the trends there to see if we're on the rise, on the, you know, going down, or we're staying about the same. Okay, so with that, Amy, what's your favorite graph on our data page? So my favorite graph is the bi-week new cases general population versus nursing home population because I think it gives you a really good idea of what's going on in the town. What's yours? You do like that one. I do. It's my favorite. I actually like the hospitalizations. Like you mentioned, it's a nice looking bell curve. <laughs> I mean, it is. It is, it's definitely. It's really great. You kind definitely. of see the peak and then us leveling off. So yes. uh, I, I like the, visually, I think that one's really nice. So we hope that this was somewhat informative. We know it's a lot of information. Um, we hope we explained it a little bit. Um, we are always looking at the data. Um, with school reopening soon, we're constantly looking at those metrics and how we can portray that to explain what's really going on in our community. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to call us. If you have any suggestions, uh, please let us know. Um, and we hope this was informative. Bye.